WTF. NVIDIA stock just reported earnings and we're watching a very easy recipe to see whether or not what happened during the last earnings report could potentially happen again this time. It's a very simple pattern, so let's just get through it. NVIDIA earning, earnings doubles, uh, sorry, doubles revenue on strong AI demand. Is it time to keep it way down low or is it time for us to actually go mega big up? Is it 1995 or not? Remember, there was an 8% options implied move going into this earnings report. So what's this pattern I'm talking about? Let's not waste any time. Previous top, one, two taps. Then on the earnings report, mega big booms. What happened this time? Well, now we establish a new high. And ironically, we're still above that. That's a 140.01. I think it's actually a 140.7. That's right here. Then what happens? We're actually above it. We're flagging over, which is stronger than last time. And now we're over again. So, oh my God, is it going to be a big ouch? Well, that would mean that it's different, different from last time and that we're going to stop going up and we're going to start going down. That's pretty much it. That's a pretty simple uh, way to think about things. So in a boot, a minute, that's, that's, that's the takeaway. NVIDIA stock is pretty much giving back some of the earnings, uh, sorry, some of the gains that it had from earlier in the, in the week. NVIDIA forecast fails to meet loftiest earnings AI star. What does that mean? Sell it. But let's have a look here. So let's refresh. Today, we're down by, oh my God, $1.12, $2.20 in after hours in the last five days. These are, these are prices we have not seen going all the way back to about a week ago. A month ago, nowhere. And six months ago, up 53%. So what's really curious here is I'm actually wondering whether NVIDIA stock or Apple stock is actually bigger, right? Which one of these Titans is the number one? Oh my God. So down 1%. Um, I think NVIDIA is still, uh, still going to be number one, baby. Still going to be number one. Jansen's still number one. There we go. Um, so it's actually doing pretty good. I think uh, resetting the bar is important for companies at certain times too. So I'm trying to make a little bit of a joke because uh, year to date, like the stock is crushing it. So sideways is like the new, uh, is the new down for NVIDIA. Sometimes it crashes, right? 10, like 20% sometimes. Uh, but for the most part, it's going higher. And with, a, with an 8% options implied move, only being down by about 1.5, hey, that's actually not all that bad. And the broader market's actually doing okay. If we look here to what happened on the one day, Eli Lilly is starting to snap back. UNH is snapping back. Here's the part I found really interesting. Um, what I was, uh, so we have our bear recipe. Did we actually close over? No. Tight inside bar, right? Tight, tight, tight. Yeah, that's a tight bar. All right. What about QQQ? Let's have a look here. Um, uh, failed breakdown. Okay. Interesting. What I wanted to point out, though, was that if we look at a short term time frame, like a 15 minute chart, I started to notice that, oh, my God, snapback, baby. Boop. Right. Snapback time. Let's go. So if we look here, very simple. We have this key area where we were expecting to find buyers slam down. Right. Upper wick, higher low, lower, uh, lower high. Sorry, whatever. Uh, back tested here for the third time. Now we're actually trying to carve it out. We're, we're pushing off that key area, notably here going into NVIDIA earnings. So it's like, oh, my God, ouch. Yes, but remember, NVIDIA was up like 5% on Monday. So running into here, I talked about how NVIDIA might give back some of its gains. And it pretty much ran into earnings starting from uh, from 2.30. So it gave back about, I don't know, like about an hour's of prog hour, hour of progress. It's putting in a higher low. I think the really big question is going to be whether we actually close with a haul low or with a full candle. If it's, if it's with a full candle, it just means that we're closing lower than we open, which means that sellers are dominating the tape. If we look at the weekly chart, this will be important because as we're looking at it right here, we're looking for hollow candles to continue. That's an expansion. That's an expansion. And uh, just before we go further, I'm going to ask you for a huge favor. If you could please consider smashing the thumbs up or subscribing to the channel, I would greatly appreciate that. So what we're basically looking for here is whether we're going to hold the hollow, uh, hollow candle. What do we need? Well, we have to just close higher than we opened the week at 139. What can we afford to do? To drop down to 138. Sorry, 139.51. Uh, so as of where we are right now, there's still like room for us to actually slide more from where we closed yesterday, uh, which means that how much can we actually per, uh, afford to slide in the Friday and still have a hollow candle? 3%. Okay, so we got 3%. We're about uh, halfway there. If we slide by another two points down to roughly 140, that's where you want to pay attention to it, right? Pretty simple. Trying to give you simple videos, simple takeaways, because I don't think you have a lot of time. So I think your time is valuable. I know mine is. Um, so there's there's the earnings versus the uh, news versus the reaction to the news. 
Sorry, they're doing some uh, fire alarm testing in my building and I uh, don't remember exactly what I was talking about. So we're just going to push forward here. Um, there we go. Going nowhere, but in after hours, the, the, the risk... All right, trying again. The uh, the risk was that this could con uh, have contagion to other stocks because going into here, uh, where was I? Here we go. All right, all right, stop the show. Right, all right, we got uh, the fire alarm going off in the background. Yeah, because stocks might actually go down. Sorry, Jerome, this was unscheduled. All right. All right, 20th time's the charm. I'm sorry, and thank you for bearing with me if you watched all the way through that. So um, looking here, the risk was that we could have some contagion. Why? Because leading into here, going back to November 3rd, the risk, uh, sorry, October uh, 14th, the risk was that earnings were actually more important than the election. Man, there's a lot of headlines happening on the election. And what I find so curious about this is that we're finding dip, dip buyers. So on the S&P 500, what I pointed out to our group this morning and uh, on the stream was that I'm noticing that that same pattern I just talked about right here, here is what happens. We get over it, back test pass, then we form a higher low. Well, this could be the first test right here, that initial test of the back test. So all we want to do is really push higher. It's this part right here. If this is going to be the low and we're going to push higher, we got higher lows, baby. That's all we need. For the bulls, we're stuck on number two right now. We need to get to number three, which means we pretty much have to just close green tomorrow. Today, we closed higher by 20 cents. Yeah, we need a little bit more than 20 cents. So let's see if the bulls can, uh, can cinch it and get us higher here. Um, what else do we have here, right? Earnings, 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 earnings. There you go. Magnificent 7 have tumbled. So there's room for them to claw back. Yes. And right now, things might be a little bit overpriced. Um, so if we do go lower, we already know that's uh, that's something to pay attention to. Um, and here's a really interesting thought from uh, Larry Summers. So <clears throat> Trump's Treasury Challenge, a pick who, get, who, who loves tariffs and comms the markets, right? That's uh, from this reporter over at the New York Times. Here's what uh, Larry says. I think Trump has a problem in uh, that he wants two different things. He wants someone who will uh, be deeply loyal, and he wants someone who will also uh, be deeply reassuring to the markets, meaning the stock market. Since stocks, uh, since markets are fearful of the tariff agenda, it's quite hard to do both. And uh, if Trump's scorecard really is the S&P 500, that's going to be really good for us if we're stock bulls because it should mean that it should be fairly easy. We should see this bull recipe complete. We should go to, go to number three and to number four. And then by the end of the week, we pretty much just have to like hold right here. Why? We talked about this being the first area to buy. If this area holds, you might look back in hindsight and say, Oh my God, right? That was it. That was that was the that was the crash. Yeah, that was it. It was one candle. Just like what? Just like this time. Sometimes it's only one, maybe a little bit more. Then we just go right back to up, right? One red candle, right back up. Oh my God, God forbid, God forbid we get two, three, maybe even four. Yes. And if we go down to strong support, this is where you want to also be buying. So make sure you really understand that. So with that said, thank you very much for tuning in. Maybe we want to come hang out with me tomorrow at 9.15 9 a.m. If not, thank you very much, and I'll see you tomorrow.